Pick the most valuable. The last day is a Pompeii by Lord Lighton. Hey, excellent. How did you acquire this? Excellent. No, 10 cents. You got it for the signature? You like the writing of Merry Christmas from Viola Cook from Aunt Emily. Because Viola and Aunt Emily aren't famous people. But the book itself is relatively well known and famous. From the latter part of the 1800s, this particular piece is a very famous work. A famous book um, for a couple of reasons. When you're looking at any old book, I want you to look for a couple things. Strong spine, right? A decorated cover if you have one. Nice, good, no odor, right? I always smell the books. I'm like, what's she sniffing the books for? Odor. You want to make sure that you keep your books out of the basement, out of wet places, right? Keep them in a place that's dry. Put them on their side on the bookshelf, not upright, okay? And your particular book has a secondary market value of about $200, and you pay 10 cents. Excellent. Old book. Books, there's all these books you don't know which ones to buy. Cookbooks. First editions, right? That's Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell from May of 1936. First editions of novels, famous novels. Um, you know, The Grapes of Wrath, whatever it might be. Cookbooks, children's literature. Those are the three that sell the best. Other books will sell well too, botanical books and such. But if you're looking for quick and easy at the thrift store, children's literature, cookbooks, first edition novels of famous stories. These are the most valuable of your group, right? If you have cellophane tape on it, you're going to devalue it almost immediately because cellophane tape just introduces acidity to your book. It'll devalue it because it's deteriorating it. If you don't have a, a cover on your book, devalue. So all of those are under 10 cents a piece. The ones in my hands are about $5 each based on condition, quality, and how many of them are out there in the market right now. Thanks for bringing those in. Illustrations by Maxfield Parrish, the great Philadelphia um, artist and illustrator. How did you acquire this book? Shopping with my husband. He is the book connoisseur. Oh, your husband's the book guy. So you're shopping with your husband, and your husband, who's the book guy, says, oh, I've got this wonderful piece. Look yep. what I found. All right. Yes. So I'm looking at this book, and this is the Arabian Nights. And it's got decorated end papers. These are called end papers. It's got a little bit of tanning. We've got the 1909 publication date. Is it a first edition? They swear it is. Who swears it is? The connoisseur. Who's the connoisseur? My husband. Oh, your husband swears it is. <laughs> Are we li still listening to him? How many years have you been listening to him? Uh, I'm single, so I don't listen a lot. I'm not good at listening, but we All right, that's compromise. okay. So you're saying he collects a lot of books? So many. So many books. And he makes sure that when they're on that bookshelf that they're not upright like a soldier, he makes sure that they're on their side. It depends. It doesn't depend, baby. If he's such a connoisseur, he better lay those books down I because this puts undue because this puts undue stress on the spine. And if you have undue stress on the spine, it's gonna be deep valued because the condition's gonna go down. The book I'm holding in my hand is worth three thousand dollars. Your connoisseur says it's worth seventy-five. You need a new connoisseur. <laughs> It's a nice book. Thank you. Uh, thank you, honey. Mary, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? What's happening? I'm going to get you a mic. Gone with the wind. Frankly, Scarlett, I don't give a damn. <laughs> you can see it, right? Wow. Somebody doesn't give a damn. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it was, a, it was my mother's. And she liked it. She read it a lot. 1936 by Macmillan. This is the June 1936 edition. It says it was reprinted twice in July and three times in July, twice in June, three times in July, uh, six times in August. By September, four times in October 1936, they republished it six more times. So this edition is the edition that was published in June 1936. Is this the first edition of Gone with the Wind? No. no. The first edition of Gone with the Wind, written by Margaret Mitchell, was published in May of 1936. You have the June edition. This book in my hand is not from June, because there's information about how they had to publish it six more times in October. 
Yours is after October. It's probably one of the six times of them publishing this book again in October of 1936. The May 1936 first edition with an original um, autograph, which I appraised some time ago at an event just like this, was sold for $61,000. That's not what you got. <laughs> it's not what you got. What you have is a Gone with the Wind edition in poor condition. We've got a problem here at the spine. We've got some pages that are coming out of the binding. In this condition, I would say your book's worth about $1,000. Thank you. Still good. She's going, it's still good. It is still good. You can live with that. OK. But this is the 1899 version. I don't even have to look because I just did it. Where's your, where are you? First name. Hi, Sally. The White House cookbooks are very desirable, very collectible. If you have cookbooks in your home, they can be the most valuable books in your home. People are surprised by that. There are collections of cookbooks, big libraries, only devoted to cookbooks. So the White House cookbook was the cookbook of cookbooks, right, in the 19th century and the early 20th century. Your book is worth about $300. The condition is fair, not real well. But I don't want you to put any tape on it, like the tape I have on my face. I don't want you to do any of that. I want you to remember that when you want to do an actual recipe, don't rip out the recipe. <laughs> One of my sisters would do that. We're going to do banana bread, rip out the page. You can't do that. We're taping the page back before mom comes home. <laughs> it was a scene at my mother's house, let me tell you. Oh gosh, anyway. Um, so about $300 for it in fair condition, about $500 in excellent condition. The White House cookbook. The Light That Failed, Roger Kipling. How'd you acquire the book? Um, I have a set of six of them. I only brought the one. Uh, there is not an odor to this book at all. They were at Grandma's house. She had an extensive collection of books. There, there's not, I mean, she cared for these books. We care for the book. Yes. This is beautiful. You can tell. You can tell. Strong spine, probably not out in the open. You can actually see when the books are, of course, in a shelf. They don't have any kind of staining in between. This particular book, most books will have a, a smell. And I often joke, you know, if you can smell it, you can't sell it. That odor that comes from being in a, in a bookshelf, being in the basement, being in the attic, that kind of thing. This does not have that. So first edition, Rudyard Kipling, 1915. This particular book in my hand. I, so it was grandma's collecting all the books. Do you have a large collection? Yeah. Yeah, large collection. I have six of this set. Okay, six of this set, all by Kipling? Yeah. Okay. All over early night. So Kantiki and all of them are there. Okay. Yeah, no jungle book. But okay, that's all right. No jungle book, but you have these other ones all by Kipling, all by the same publisher? Yes. Okay. I brought pictures. Okay, yes, let's do all, this one. Let's this focus on this one. one. Okay, this is the worst one. So you brought the one with, in the worst condition. Correct. Okay, the one in my hand is worth about $1,200. That doesn't mean the other ones are more or less. It depends on the title. It depends on the author. It depends on the condition. It depends on many factors. So don't assume that all the rest of them are that high or that low. Yeah. Because, of course, you have to see them individually. Yeah. Thank you for bringing them. You did a good job with condition. Condition is so important. It's so important. It's got to be in good shape. So you've got to make sure that they are indeed in good shape. The swastika is a symbol of good luck from the early years of the 20th century. From the Actually, it dates all the way back into the ancient Egyptian time. The swastika is, in fact, a symbol of good luck. Now, we see the swastika and we think German nationalism, we think the Nazis, we think Hitler, World War II, that's what we think. The swastika actually would be tilted to have that kind of impact or effect. So in terms of iconography or symbolism, we've been talking about iconography and what symbols mean in different, in different works of art. That particular swastika in this particular book is actually a symbol that relates to good luck, some associated with peace, but it's more so good luck than it is actual peace. But that's why. So it's, it's relatively important. Um, it's interesting that it's in this context, for example. It's imprinted in all the covers as well. That's right. So this is also in the cover. Embossed is the term. Em that's OK. Embossed in the, um, in the actual covers. And that's very, very typical of that particular time period with Kipling. It has a lot to do with Kipling and such. Nice. Thanks so much.
When I appraised George Washington's wallet, the wallet that he actually carried when he crossed the Delaware, which was on Fox Business Network's Strange Inheritance, there was marbleized end papers inside, just like this. Marbleized end papers. This is marbling. This is what they did in the 1700s. How'd you acquire this? What made you buy it? Shakespeare's Comedies, Tragedies, and Histories, published according to True Original Copies, 1623. You bought this at an estate sale? I can't hear you, honey. So what's your favorite? King Lear, Merchant of Venice, what's your favorite? This book dates to 1623. Did you pay more than $500 for this book? This book has a secondary market value of about 1200 bucks. In perfect condition. You don't have every volume, just have one. Where was the estate sale? This neck of the woods? Books. Books are the things you're all going to overlook. Costume jewelry, the things you're all going to overlook. Some beanie babies you're going to overlook. But typically books. They only look for publication mark. You have to look for whether or not a true and important um, author like Shakespeare is going to actually show you one in an early edition. So most of his editions are, of course, the 1500s. By the early 1600s, you have people who are copying his editions. That's what you have here. Strong spine, marbleized end papers, as I showed you before. And also what you have is what's called a Cambridge University binding. When the binding looks like this, with the gilt around it, that square, the same square gilding embossed on this side with just actually straight elements on the, on the spine, it's called a Cambridge binding. It's the kind of binding that is done all the way back at Cambridge University. It's the binding that will be used and custom made for all of the American colonies as well. So it's quite famous. Look for the binding. Now, Tony's going, I don't know, I saw it was an early date, right? And you said, hey, it's Shakespeare, I'm taking it. What'd you pay? 75 bucks. That's a deal. <laughs> this one is Alice in Wonderland, book and record. You recognize the 45s? <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a 45. All right. So Alice in Wonderland here. We don't have any information in the front. We're missing a frontispiece page for the Alice in Wonderland book. How old do you think the book is? Well, if you look at the way in which these pictures are done, you can see that the book is from the late 60s, early 70s. You know, it sort of, it has that age of Aquarius kind of feel, right? That sort of um, groovy kind of look for this particular example. This is Alice in Wonderland. A lot of times what you have is the Alice in Wonderland book with the Peter Pan record. So you don't have that. Value on this, about $8 for both. Thank you. Did you have some fun? Did you come back? I did. Yeah, I did. You brought something else. Brought Tell me what I've got. Uh, inlaid portfolio from my grandmother's house. Inlaid portfolio, letters, responses, addresses, and notes. So it's clear. There's nothing in it, right? It's just right. the portfolio. She didn't right. use it. Right. All right. It's all inlaid. Let's talk a little bit about it. So you have a highly polished wood. You have in brass inlay. On this side, you also have bone, which has been colored. On this side, you have bone and ivory, along with abalone accents on this portfolio. So this portfolio would have been like a keepsake. Okay. Uh, maybe you would keep your Valentine's Day card in it, or maybe you would keep a scrapbook type of thing. But also, of course, letters when the lost art of letter writing was very important. This piece dates to about the turn of the 20th century based on the Art Nouveau style. That means it dates from between 1895 and about 1910. That's what you're looking at, the Art Nouveau. Um, Louis Comfort Tiffany made the Art Nouveau famous with those sinuous lines and organic forms in lamps and decorative arts and pieces like this. So this would sit on a desk or it would sit on the first table that you, when you came into a Victorian house, it would sit on that table where you would leave your calling card. Same type of thing. This particular piece is relatively um, popular, but this one's in ver of very high quality and very high quality materials. Value on the piece in my hand, about $125. Okay. Very Thank nice. You. You're welcome. Robert Louis Stevenson known for. Is he known for children's little books? Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Well, Robert Louis Stevenson is known for a 
particular book. What book is that? Come on! Treasure Island! Why am I sniffing your book? Yeah, what happens is, he's a picture of books. The paper. The paper has an odor. Yeah. You're always sniffing for odors, usually, right? As opposed to something else. This particular book is in relatively good shape. It's very typical of the time period, early 20th century. It's printed right onto a piece of canvas, and then they put a staple in both sides to make it a book based on the idea of oleographs. This particular book is in nice shape, but it's worth about $10. OK. This is a mid-18th century German Bible. All right. There's some notations on it in 1804, but this page is actually printed, and it has 1744 on it. We could go through page by page and see if that's the earliest of them, but we'd have to see. Some of these Bibles, of course, are rarely in this kind of condition. The little piece that has fallen is right here, this little piece. So they got as far as what would be considered, of course, you know, chapter 25, which is here. It's beautiful just to look at the, at the actual text, the way it's been printed. Right. So you've got an 18th century Bible, a couple of things you want to look for. It is not uncommon that, of course, these, these particular straps would be lost. Right? How much did you pay for it at the, um, I want you to also look at a couple of other things. You see this stripe work? Looks like a crisscross or a checkerboard. That's all done leather working. So there's somebody who's actually an expert with the leather working. Somebody's an expert in putting it together, the binding. Someone who's an expert in also putting each page next to one another in the middle part of the 1840s. Let me put it this way. Uh, Louis XV is on the throne from 1715 to 1774. So he's like hanging around with Madame de Pompadour, you know, <laughs> waiting for, having a good party in France in this time. In Germany, you are seeing, of course, the 18th century just plot along as they uh, acquire more territory. This is a beautiful piece. Value on this piece is going to be about $2,000. How much did you pay? $50. $50. It's very rare that these types of books get into that environment where someone will say, well, I'm just going to sell it at a yard sale. Really beautiful. Beautiful from the outside, beautiful also on the inside.